It's just a float, you scaredy cat. It's not easy to tame a dragon. They're covered in spikes, they're notoriously ill-tempered, and most importantly, they breathe fire. Understandably, most business directories run a little thin in their dragon taming section, so when you find a team capable of working with dragons, that's a phone number you don't want to lose. Just ask Spyro. Released in late 2002, there are plenty of reasons to be excited about Enter the Dragonfly. The fourth game in the critically acclaimed Spyro the Dragon series, Enter the Dragonfly was also Spyro's first flight on a then new round of consoles. The game was released to the PlayStation 2, obviously the dragon was born and raised on PlayStation, but it also came to the Nintendo GameCube, marking the first time a Spyro game had ever appeared on a non-Sony console. While that would seem to be a good thing for the series, that also gets to the problem with Enter the Dragonfly. Up to this point, the Spyro franchise had been handled exclusively by the team at Insomniac Games. This one was not. Enter the Dragonfly was the first Spyro game not developed by the Dragon's creators, and frankly, it shows. After all, it's not easy to tame a dragon. Way to go, Spyro! Like prior Spyro games, Enter the Dragonfly is a simple three-dimensional platform game. Playing as the spunky little Spyro, you control the purple dragon as he traverses his world in search of magical dragonflies. I guess they have to be collected to prevent the apocalypse or something, whatever. Stories are usually relevant in platformers, especially simple ones. And really, platformers don't get much simpler than Enter the Dragonfly. The thing about Enter the Dragonfly is that, like many similar games in the late 90s and early 2000s, it's really a platformer in name only. The game is basically a collection quest spread over nine worlds. You spend most of your time button mashing enemies, gathering gems, and finding dragonflies. There's very little actual platforming, and whether or not that's a problem depends on your expectations. If you're looking for lots of challenging jumps and gaps and obstacles, well, Spyro can breathe a lot of things, he doesn't breathe those. But he does offer a fun, if exceedingly simple, little platform game, at least in the collect-a-thon, banjo-kazooie sense of the word. There are big worlds to explore, plenty of things to collect, an armada of vehicles to commandeer, and it all works. At least technically, there's nothing wrong with Spyro from a design standpoint, it's just there's nothing new about it either. This had all been done before, and with all due respect to Check 6 games, it was done much better by Insomniac. Ultimately, this game feels like a copy of Spyro rather than a true sequel. It didn't push the series forward even a nudge, and the charm and design savvy that made the first three games enjoyable is sorely missing in the average and, well, stagnant Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Proof that you can give a dragon a new trainer, but you can't make him move.